Let's review a problem from the friction lab. It was also in the book as sample problem 6-1. You had to predict what angle uh, the ramp would be at when your block first started to slide. Let's reverse that. Let's say that we are going to lift a ramp up. And beaker first starts to slide when the ramp is at 40 degrees. And from that information, we want to calculate the coefficient of static friction. And so what we're looking at is for uh, the condition just before beaker started to slide. So maybe it's 39.9999999 degrees, but we'll get the same result if we put in the angle at which we first started to notice them to move. And so 40 degrees is our theta slide, if you will. And so we draw a free body diagram of beaker draw and label the forces acting on him. There's a weight acting down and there's a normal force and there's also what else? Well it's friction obviously and so friction is going to oppose the motion. It's parallel to the ramp and up but what kind of friction is this? Remember it's just before he starts to slide and so this is static friction. After he starts to slide it becomes kinetic and he would actually start to accelerate. And so it is the force of static friction. We want a coordinate system, and so we put it so it's parallel to the ramp. I think that makes it easiest. Then the weight is the only thing that will have uh, sine and cosine components. And so let's take a look uh, where angle theta would be. And so angle theta is between the weight and the y direction. If we were to lower the ramp, then the weight would line up more with the normal force. So if this theta got less, so with this theta. So there's theta. And some of the forces in the y direction are zero, no acceleration perpendicular to the ramp. And what are those y forces? Well, we have the normal force in the y direction, and then we have sum of the weight. And so sum of the weight is in the y direction, and sum of the weight is in the x direction. The y component is adjacent to, to the angle, and so it's going to be mg cosine theta. And since it's in the negative y direction, I have a minus sign here, whereas the normal force is all in the positive y direction. And so that's one equation we need. We actually need uh, four here. The other equation we need is some of the forces in the x equals ma, and that equals zero. So again, we're solving for just before he goes, so there's no acceleration. And the force of static friction is all in the positive x. And then the other component of the weight, opposite angle theta, is down the ramp. And I made that negative x, so it's a negative force. And so we get force of static friction is mg sine theta. And so we have an equation for the force of static friction. The force of static friction, remember, is only as big as it needs to be. And so it's less than or equal to mu static times the normal force. But in this problem, just before beaker slides, static friction is doing all it can to keep him from sliding so it's at its maximum, and so it is equal to mu times the normal force. So let's substitute that into there. And so now we have mu times the normal force is mg sine theta, and that's good because we're solving for mu, so we've introduced our unknown into the equations. And then we also have an equation for the normal force, and so that goes into there. And it looks complex, but notice we can divide both sides by m, both sides by g. And so mu static is sine over cosine. And so that's tangent theta, or 0 0.84. If you want to do this, take out a blank sheet of paper and see if you can go through all these steps on your own. Uh, you can consult this for help. But if you really want to learn physics, you should be able to do all these steps uh, pretty easily, but that's only going to come with practice, practice, practice.